Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Pastor Doug Given with you again for another midweek moment. Uh, I know you've been excited to have another one of those come out. I want to just wish you a blessed Easter season. Look at that sign, huh? You can see there's more space here than there is there, but it says uh, blessed Easter season. This is a little sign that's on my door before I go out my garage door right there. And uh, I just love it. Make it change for the seasons, that kind of thing. And uh, now we're back centered with the uh, lovely spring uh, ensemble, a little April calendar right there. Uh, that looks like a cross, but I think it's a, a fence, picture of a fence looking across the field. Uh, got all my stuff laying around here, <clears throat> everything I need. If I get hungry, I got a couple crackers. If I get, uh, I can't see, or it's too late at night, I got my glasses. I have my, um, whatever you call this from, I showed you before, which is a lifesaver on the, uh, it's a, what is this called, a massager? Yeah. Anyway, for tired necks, listen, you all need to invest in this. I show you products all the time at church, <clears throat> and uh, and that's a good deal. But I digress. Uh so I have a weakness I want to confess to you uh, to, tonight as we uh, are do a midweek moment uh, today, this week. And I want to say that I have on occasion purchased a lottery ticket. I confess my sin. Don't know why. Uh, I, I tell the Lord that if I, I just get one every, you know, maybe once a month if I happen to think of it at a store. I tell God, you know, if I win, I'm going to give it away, most of it, you know, to others, because that's what I would love to do. Why we have these three and four and 10 million, $100 million lotteries and the crazy part of our world, but that's not what I want to talk about. I got off track. This one uh, is worth another free ticket. I kind of made a note of it right up there. I scan them uh, when I, when the, after the drawing, Again, just every now and then, and that's, that's worth another free ticket. Most of the time, and again, this is just, uh, I'm not uh, obsessed with that. I don't do it every day. Uh, like I said, maybe once or twice a month, pick one up as I think about it, or if I hear in the news, I'll take my one in $290 million, $90 million chance in winning. From the uh, a website that I found, Powerball jackpot winning is one in $292 million chance one in 292 million if you're more interested in mega millions uh jackpot you have a a one in 300 million chance i don't know how they count that of getting a ticket that's going to actually be drawn um and there's a really interesting study on on these lottery winners i found out there's a guy named edward ugood u-g-e-d Edward Ugood, U-G-E-D, who's written a book about lot, uh, lottery winners, and he found through his study of many of those who won that they wished they hadn't ever won. Can you imagine that? That you win a million-dollar lottery or more, and you now say to this gentleman, after you've had your winnings, and, and maybe it's a year or two later, that you'd wished you'd never won. And what he says in that book is that family and friends hound you for money. Family and friends hound you for money. You're subject to scam artists, and uh, and and it's just a, a mess. And and we know, and I've heard that many of those people who uh, get a lottery winning end up being divorced or broke uh, shortly after that. And sure enough, uh, there's a statistic that seventy percent of the lottery winners are back to being broke after seven years. I'll repeat it, 70% of the lottery winners are broke after about seven years. This is a crazy sum of money. And he writes about a, a lottery, uh, the curse of the lottery, where people get this money and then they spend it or they give it away or you know don't control it or don't operate it correctly. And then 70% end up going back broke. So it's not in the money. Despite our desire or my weird habit, it's not about the money. And, and you and I know that. And the chances of winning are so far out there, one in almost 300 million. I even, you know, as I listen to myself, I'm going to 
why waste that dollar to to do that? Um, my brother a couple months ago, or maybe it was around the holidays, uh, won a thousand dollars from a scratch off, and we were out for lunch, uh, the three of us, and and we all got scratch offs, and of course I, you know, didn't scratch anything off, and they they won a few a few bucks, but uh, anyway. It's not in the lottery, whether you win it or not. It's not in there. And Jesus says all the time to us, in fact, if you do a topical search of what Jesus taught, he talks about money more than anything else. He talks about money more than anything else uh, throughout scripture. Where your treasure is, there also your heart will be. And so uh, what I want to suggest is rather than worry about getting this money now or buying lottery tickets when there's a Powerball has been announced, a one in 292 million people chance of winning. It's so obscure and so far out that it's never likely to happen. My only interest in getting it every now and then is, you know, maybe the luck of the draw. I, I might, I want, I would love to win and then I would give it away. I'd, get, I'd pay off the debt at the churches if there was any and I would, you know, uh, give it out to the those in need and, you know, put some for my particular needs at, and, and just give it away because I think it would be great. And I, I I feel, you know, strong feelings among all those in the celebrity world and the sports world that are multi-million dollar winners and not winners, but multi-million dollar earners and yet don't do anything with those dollars toward helping the world to be a better place. There's so much that could be done to help feed the hungry uh, clothe people, house people, and on and on down the list. But anyway, what I'm about, though, is that, you know, we want to, so the idea of trying to buy a lottery ticket to get a winnings, whether you want to give it away or hoard it all, you know, 70% of those who who get a lottery ticket winning are broke in seven years. Uh, there's divorce. There's a mess. Um, there are all kinds of scams and problems in families and relationships because of it. So it's not all it's cracked up to be. And what I want to suggest tonight is thinking about the fact that when you and I think about this lottery, for example, we want to win big, you and I already have. You and I already have. The Bible tells us, right, that God sent Jesus to die for us. So you and I have, are you ready? A free entry into heaven for, that's not somebody's, that's your name. I went to high school with her, but Anyway, your name is your name. Admit one, signed Jesus. See that over there in the corner? Huh? Free free entry into heaven for you, your name. No purchases necessary. This is a gift of grace. God has poured out grace upon us like Niagara Falls, six stories high, 200,000 tons of water, and we are washed, cleansed in our baptismal gift, fed at the table, uh, centered on God's word, and we are have free admittance as we believe and have faith. Because in the Lutheran understanding, we say that we were saved uh, when, when Jesus died on the cross. Now, this is our understanding that then that's when at 33 AD, we were saved. So now, uh, as the Bible says in Romans 5, uh, we are justified <clears throat> by grace through our faith, justified by God or made right with God by our faith through grace. So grace is that unconditional love of God that gives us this free ticket into heaven. So friends, really, why even bother? I mean, I, you know, why even bother with that when we have this? This will last forever. This is more important. And the what I love about the Bible is there's a verse that I really think is strong in 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive what God has prepared for God's people. Amen and hallelujah. Free entry into heaven for you and for me Admit one, signed by Jesus, who gave his life for us, rose again, defeated death, and now lives in, with, and through us so that the Easter blessings can continue. We are still in the Easter season, my friends. Remember, it says uh, this week will be the fourth Sunday of Easter. 
the fourth Sunday of Easter, we are Easter people. And we can rejoice and be glad and skip the lottery tickets because true joy, true happiness, true peace and hope is found only in Jesus Christ with this promise of eternal life and our free admittance. You know, if this raises up questions, concerns, or uh, anything like that, feel free to give me a, a call or send me an email or a text and be happy to talk more about it. I want you to know that God loves you right where you are, uh, but God loves you so much, God doesn't want to leave you there. God would like to see you and I grow more deeply into the faith, uh, to share that love with others, and to know that the lottery has really truly been won in Jesus Christ. Three snaps. All God's people said, amen. Thanks for tuning in to the Midweek Moment. Uh, don't forget, it's Faith Lutheran Church in Avon, out on 10th Street, west of 267. Uh, small building, Big Hearts. Services right now at 11 until May 5th. Then they're going to change to 9. May 5th, they change to 9 o'clock out at Faith. And then St. Andrews in Speedway, across from the McDonald's on Crawfordsville Road, where the cars go like this. Uh, St. Andrews right now worships at nine and starting May 5th, we'll move to 11. And you're invited to come if you're in the area. Somebody's picking this up on Facebook or whatever. Uh, may God be with you all until we meet again. And you have won. You're a winner. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Midweek Moment for St. Andrews Speedway and Faith in Avon, Pastor Doug. <laughs>